Recently, I did a video on how to design nice finger grips for a knob. A number of viewers requested that I show how to add threads to the knob to make a nice replacement bottle cap. That could be useful for anyone who has limited grip strength, perhaps due to injury or arthritis. That sounds like a good idea, so let's do it. I'm going to do this using the Thread Profile Workbench. If you don't already have it installed, go to Tools, Add-on Manager, and search for Thread. Select the Thread Profile Workbench and install. Once installed, it's going to want you to restart FreeCAD. The Thread Profile object includes an extensive list of preset values based on industry standard notation. In that notation, the major diameter of the thread is the key point. The minor diameter is assumed based on the thread type and pitch. So step 1, measure the threads of the bottle we want to fit. I'm holding the caliper diagonally across the threads to make sure that I capture the widest point. I come up with about 27.5 millimeters. Next we need the thread pitch. This is just a measurement from one thread to the thread above on center vertically. I'd show you a picture of that, but it's a little hard to hold the bottle and the calipers and snap a picture all at the same time. So I'll just give you a diagram. The result was 2.64 millimeters. My experience with 3D printed threads is that it is not an exact science. This is mostly due to tolerance and clearance issues with 3D printed parts versus an existing thread. So before I go to the trouble of designing and printing the final piece, I need to create a few test rings to make sure that I have the right thread parameters. So starting in the thread profile workbench, I want to create a bottle thread. The tool icons for different thread types are identical except for color, so be sure to pick the one with the green star. Select the bottle thread profile and come down to presets in the data pane. The closest preset is 28 millimeters, so I'll start with that. To actually make the tap, select the thread profile and the make helix tool. The helix is created linked with the profile so that the parameters of the thread profile control the parameters of the helix. Now with both of them conveniently selected from the last operation, select do sweep to create the tap. There are several more parameters to set for the thread, so open up the sweep and select the bottle thread profile. First we have a parameter internal or external. We want to set this to internal. When set to internal, the workbench creates a tap that can be cut from an object in order to form the thread. When set to external, it directly creates a threaded rod with the selected parameters. The minor diameter is defaulted to 25.5 millimeters. I'm sure that would work fine if we were precision machining this out of metal, but we're 3D printing plastic. We need to have a little bit of tolerance and better clearance. As a first guess, I'm going to set it to 26.5 millimeters. The pitch is way off. I don't know why it picked that. The measured pitch was 2.64 millimeters, so we enter that. A word of caution for this workbench. Some of the parameters, when changed, will reset other parameters that you may have already changed, particularly when you set internal or external. Both the minor diameter and the pitch get reset to default values. That's why I've done it in this particular order but it's still a good idea to look everything over and make sure it hasn't been disturbed. It all looks good now. Back to the part workbench. Create a primitive cylinder. Give it a radius of 15 millimeters and a height of 10 millimeters to match the tap. Select the cylinder and the tap and cut. We just export this cut as a step file. Print it and see how it fits on the bottle. Be sure to print your test ring in whatever material you intend to print the cap in, or at least the same type of material. Different plastics have different characteristics that can subtly affect the result. In this case, adding the 1mm diameter tolerance was a really good guess. I get a tight fit, but not too tight. 
The test ring easily enough screws down onto the bottle threads until it hits the stop. As you're doing the test fitting, the minor diameter tolerance is important, but getting the pitch right is even more so. So if you find that your test ring starts out screwing on just fine and then becomes impossible, the pitch is most likely wrong. On the other hand, if it screws on with difficulty the first time and gets easier each time you take the ring off and put it back on, you likely have an issue with sag during printing or little boogers of plastic forming on the threads. That may or may not be something you need to correct. It's perfectly acceptable if you just screw it and unscrew it a few times to run it in after printing. Now that we have the thread parameters right, it's a matter of the cap depth. When I screw the 10mm test ring onto the bottle, it goes completely to the stop, and the top of the threaded rim extends 0.85mm above the ring. I measured that using the stinger on my caliper. Ideally, when the cap is screwed on, the lip of the neck should press firmly into the base of the cap. The 0.85 millimeters may be enough since I intend to glue the liner of an existing bottle cap inside the finger grip cap in order to get a good liquid seal. So now that we have good parameters for a thread, it's time to bring back the finger grip knob and add threads. First, its dimensions need to be adjusted for the application. I don't want it to be larger in diameter than the bottle that it's going to be capping. So I'll open out the cut and edit the sketch that made the revolve and change the radial length. I'll start with 25 millimeters. So far so good, but that's still going to be a bit large. The total radius of the cap is going to be 25 plus another 12 for the radius of the arc at the end of the cap. So reduce that radial length to 18, giving a total radius of 30 millimeters or a diameter of 60 millimeters which will be just smaller than the bottle itself. But when I close the sketch, the finger grips have disappeared. Opening up sketch 001, the path for the finger grip cuts, I believe I see the problem. Somehow the arc that controls the sweep used to cut out the finger grips has escaped its constraints. So I'll grab the center of that arc and move it inward towards the origin. As I do that, it seems to be recaptured by its constraints and once again is doing the right thing. When I close the sketch, I see another issue. It looks like the sweep profile is now too large. As you can see, we're back to the geometry error where we're actually not cutting anything out. So I'll open the profile sketch and reduce the size of the circle. Now we're back to proper finger grips. It's time to cut the threads. Switch to the thread profile workbench. Hide the cut so we can see what we're doing. Create a bottle thread profile. Select the 28mm preset. Set the thread type to internal. Create the helix and do the sweep. Now open the sweep and reselect the thread profile. Add 1mm for tolerance to the minor diameter. Set the pitch to 2.64 millimeters to match the successful test ring. Bringing the knob back, I cannot help but notice that the thread tap is sticking above the top of the knob. This makes sense since the knob is designed with its center of mass on the origin, and the thread tap defaults to resting on the XY base plane. It's easy enough to adjust. The knob is 12 millimeters high, meaning that the bottom of the knob is 6 millimeters below the XY plane. So select the bottle thread profile, and in the data pane, set Z equals minus 6 millimeters. The thread profile is resting directly on the bottom of the knob now. Make the knob transparent so we can see it clearly. The tap is 10 millimeters high, and the knob is 12 millimeters high. This gives 2 millimeters on the top of the cap, but I'd like to have a little bit more in case somebody really cranks the knob down. So in the revolve sketch, increase the height of the knob to 14 millimeters. Adjust the placement of the tap to Z equals minus 7 millimeters. Set the cut back to opaque. Select the cut and the sweep, go back to the part workbench, and cut. 
That's looking pretty good, but I think we have too many cuts for the finger grips now. So I'll just open up the polar array, and in the data pane, set the count to 11. Give it a moment to recompute, and that looks great. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.